In this video, we're going to talk about how we can use modified duration and Macaulay duration to estimate change in price of an investment or change in price of an asset based on the change of the interest rate. So let's recall that the modified duration is a percentage change. So it's the change in the price of the asset for a particular yield rate divided by the price of that asset for that uh, interest rate, that yield rate. And of course, since we know that as the interest rate goes up, the price goes down, we take the negative of that because we would like the modified duration to be a positive number. So let's just rearrange the equation, multiply both sides by the price and a negative sign. Or in particular, convert it to differential notation because we have a derivative here. So we can write it as dp is equal to the opposite of the price at a particular investment, uh, at yield rate I mean, times the, the modified duration times the change in the interest, or the di. Okay. So for a given yield rate, say i naught, let's call the change delta i, and assuming that it's small, we can approximate the, the uh, corresponding change in price by plugging in i naught in for the price, and using the modified duration multiplied by the change in interest rate, that's going to give us a change in price. So again, we can use the modified duration to help us get an approximate change in price based on a change in the interest rate. And this is what we meant by earlier when we mentioned that if we have a measure with these duration calculations as a measure of interest rate sensitivity. So uh, for this particular one, we call it the first order modified approximation. We can also do a similar thing using Macaulay duration. This one requires a little bit more development, so let's go through it. So let's say we have an investment, it has a price of P, then we can certainly calculate whatever the value of that investment is at time T by taking the price and moving it forward, T years. So what we want to know is, is there a time at which the derivative of that current value with respect to the interest rate is zero? Or again, thinking about it again, if we have the, uh, the value of the current value of the derivative is zero, that means that if we move slightly, either a little bit less or a little bit greater, we would expect that the current value would change just in that, again, small. It shouldn't be a very big change then if we have a derivative that's equal to zero. So let's solve that. Take the derivative, we'll need to use a product rule. That's what this computation is doing here. Um, we here are just dividing both sides by one plus i to the t minus one. And then solve for t, you get the negative of the change in price over the price times one plus i. Well, if I ignore the times one plus i piece, we have Macaulay, excuse me, modified duration. And remembering that if I take the, uh, the modified duration and multiply it by one plus i, I get the Macaulay duration. So what that means is that the value of an investment at that time is not affected much by small changes in i, because again, we have a horizontal tangent line at that point, if you think about it, a graph, thinking about it graphically. All right, so in particular, the current value for the, at the Macaulay duration, duration time, if I change the i slightly, should be about the same as the current value at that particular value of i, or just substituting what we said the current value was at the price times 1 plus i to the Macaulay duration time. All right, so now let's just substitute the price of the investment on the left-hand side this is just again using the current value formula that we had above and then solve for the price at that interest rate. You get the price at the uh, interest rate, the, the starting interest rate, not the changed one, and then divided by, or excuse me, times this quotient raised to the Macaulay duration. So this is what's referred to as the first order Macaulay approximation of what happens to the price for a small interest rate change. So let's do an example. Let's say we have a bond. It has a price of $850.46 in a modified duration of nine. 
when we use an annual effective interest rate of 7.4. Let's use both of our approximation methods that we just developed to figure out what happens to the new price if the interest rate changes from 7.4 up to 8. All right, so for our first order modified approximation, we're going to take the old price and subtract off the old price times the Macaulay, excuse me, the modified duration times the change in the interest rate, which in this case would be 0 0.006 because we went up six tenths of a percent, which gives us a new price of $804.54. Using our first order of Macaulay approximation, the first thing we have to figure out is what the Macaulay duration is because we were given the modified duration. At the interest rate that we were given, the starting interest rate, the Macaulay interest rate will be, or the duration I mean, will be 9 times 1 plus i, so 9 times 1.074, which is 9.666. Using that uh, first order Macaulay approximation formula, it's price at the original interest rate times the quotient of the original, 1 plus the original, plus over 1 plus the new, and then raised up to the Macaulay duration. If we do that one, we get 805.87. Now it turns out that you can show that in general, the Macaulay duration, excuse me, the Macaulay approximation will give you a better approximation to, the, to what the new price would be than the modified duration. They're pretty close here, right? They're a dollar thirty some off. But this 805.87 is actually closer to what the price should be versus than the 804.52. So just in general, from a, a, an accuracy standpoint, the Macaulay approximation gives you a little bit better approximation in most cases.